Hello, welcome to Logan for Liberty. I'm coming at you from the Pacific Northwest, where the sun shines so bright, only to rain just a few hours later. I hope you're all having a fantastic day, evening, or night. To get started, so there is no confusion, I would like to state that I am not an objectivist. I don't say that because I have apprehensions about objectivism. Objectivism is alien to me, therefore I would be dishonest to try to malign objectivism in any way. On the opposite end, I can't praise objectivism as I am mostly unfamiliar with it. So this series is going to be me exploring objectivism. I'm going to go over how I found out about objectivism, my exposure to it, what I think I know, and then along the way I will issue corrections about anything I got wrong. And at the end, I guess I'll find out whether or not I can call myself an objectivist. For full disclosure, if I had to label myself, I would call myself a libertarian. I have used labels such as classical liberal, market anarchist, constitutionalist, libertarian republican, and so on to describe myself. The only thing I know about objectivism is that they support the free market, politically they are for a limited government, and they seek to empower the individual. Those are tenets that I like about objectivism. I also fully understand that there is tension between objectivists and libertarians. From what I see so far, without having read any works of objectivism, objectivists are more philosophical than libertarians and tend to find it counterproductive, or maybe a misdirection of efforts to only focus on the political aspect of human experience. That isn't to say that objectivists won't talk about politics. From what I've seen, objectivists are very political. Objectivists don't just operate in the realm of politics. They talk about ethics, epistemology, metaphysics, aesthetics, and logic. Objectivism is a philosophy. Libertarianism includes quite a big spectrum but if I were to take the consistent libertarian position and generalize a little bit, I feel comfortable stating that libertarians and objectivists disagree on foreign policy. And from my understanding, objectivists typically reject the label libertarian along the lines of that a consistent libertarian would be an anarcho-capitalist and objectivists are not anarchists. There's only one anarchist that comes to mind that would consider himself a Randian. And just so you know, a Randian is someone who is an intellectual student of Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand being the architect of objectivism. But I'm using the term Randian to make a distinction between people who favorably view and admire Ayn Rand and people who follow her philosophy and carry the torch to a T. Michael Malice is a Randian as far as I know. That's neither here nor there. In order to put it simply and move on, libertarianism and objectivism are not the same. They are similar, but they are not the same. So let me start with how I heard about objectivism, or at the very least, what my earliest exposure to objectivism and the work of Ayn Rand is in general. I left high school early due to a multitude of reasons. None of it had to do with me slacking or being without intelligence. That's something I could talk about some other day, which I think might make a pretty good video, especially if I talk about education and, you know, individual decisions. But senior year, we started reading Anthem by Ayn Rand, which was her first published work of fiction. I didn't read it because I was on my way out, but I was heavily intrigued by the book because I was a huge fan of The Giver by Lewis Laurie, and I also really enjoyed Animal Farm. By the time I was a senior, Mockingbird Part 1 had just come out, and I thoroughly enjoyed the Hunger Games movie series. So there was something about Anthem that really enticed me, but I never got around to reading it until recently. However, when the 2016 election was really starting to kick off, I became really interested in politics, which was more of a continuation of my love for foreign policy and history. I found myself feeling distraught by both Republicans and Democrats. I never really cared about the two-party system because, in my mind, if we had four parties that were all socialists, I wouldn't like that any better than the two-party system. 
I was already a Ron Paul fan by my sophomore year, so I was already on the journey of classical liberalism with some hiccups in between, going back and forth. Nonetheless, in 2015, my friend ended up showing me Stossel. I started watching that show religiously. One episode Stossel had Euron Brook on. Euron Brook is, at the time of this video, the president of the Ayn Rand Institute. I became highly fascinated with the way Euron Brook talked about things. Keep in mind, at this point, I was still 18 years old. Eventually, I would be exposed to the likes of Mark Pellegrino and Rucka Rucka Ali, thanks to Dave Rubin, and that would eventually lead me to more Euron Brook. I've been listening to the lectures of Euron Brook and his podcast. I've listened to anything Mark Pellegrino goes on. I've also dived into Rucka Reacts. So, what I know about objectivism is entirely second-hand. At this point in time, I have no conceptual understanding of objectivism that is actually meaningful. 